If you were my close friend or family member and you came up to me and you said, Mike, I know you're into that crypto stuff. You make those weird YouTube videos in your basement. I think I wanna get into Bitcoin mining in my home. Like what Bitcoin miner should I buy? I would tell you this one. Why this one? Why would I recommend this one? Well, first of all, it's from Canon. And Canon, if you don't know, they made the first Bitcoin ASIC miner way back in 2013. So history lesson, Bitcoin first was mined with CPUs, then GPUs, then FPGAs, and then ASICs when Canon made the first one in 2013. And well, the rest is history after that. But it's cool to see they still innovate, still make really cool home Bitcoin miners that make Bitcoin mining accessible for everybody. And why, why this one specifically to just like the generally the people that I would care about? Well, I think Canon's filter, their vision in designing this was that it would just sit on a shelf on a big electronics retailer and somebody could walk up to it. Somebody who just knew about Bitcoin and just they could pick it up and everything from the unboxing experience, the setup, the usage, all the little bells and whistles that we're going to get into, it would just bring that person so much joy. And I would want that for any family member or close friend who wanted to get into Bitcoin mining. And I hope that in the rest of this video, I can show you those things to convince you just the same. Let's get going. I think it all starts with the unboxing experience that definitely builds some anticipation. But once you finally get it open, you finally get that lid off, you are greeted with the Canon Avalon Nano 3S. Underneath there is just some like odds and ends that you might need. And then you're gonna get the uh, power supply which is external to the unit and just plugs into your standard house outlet. Taking a first look at the Nano 3S, before we even get it powered on here, you'll see the circular display on there which is really cool. I can't wait for you to see it powered on just a little bit later in this video. Also, there's two ports on it. One is gonna be for the power supply, which will connect to your standard house outlet. And the other is gonna be for the included USB Wi-Fi dongle so you can get it on your local area network. It also has two removable pieces. The first is gonna be a filter that slides out. And this, uh, you know, as it's running, it's gonna be pulling in air, which can contain dust and particulates and it will catch on this filter, which is reusable. You can clean it and that way it doesn't get into the machine and impact performance at all. And actually the first time I saw this was on the Mini 3, which is their baseboard heater Bitcoin miner, which is really cool. I highly recommend you check out my video on that. I'll leave it linked up in the card above. On the other side, in the front, it also has this removable plastic piece that I guess is just like a guard to make sure nothing can get in there or impact it or it gets broken in any way. But that's that's pretty much it. So now we just got to get this thing powered on. We're going to check out the setup and we're going to get this thing mining and check out some of that display features and a couple of the different modes. First time it powers up, the display is going to tell you to download the Avalon Family app from the App Store. Once you launch that, it finds the machine right away and here you can do some customization. First thing I'm going to do is change the pool it's mining to to a custom one for me, which is via BTC. And then once I've done that, I can go explore some of the other options that this mining machine has. One of the standout features of the Avalon Nano 3S is definitely that circular display. It's gonna show you a lot of information in a really small space from the time to the hash rate of the machine to the mode that it is currently running on, more on that in a little bit. The IP address, the power it's pulling. I mean, heck, it even has the dates and it has the day of the week included as well. But the light show, I think, is also my favorite. Let's check that out. So in the app, you can control the different lighting modes that it has from not only the color of this LED strip on the front, but also some different effects that I think are really fun just as like a cool little statement piece on your desk or in your area, wherever you set this up. Okay, enough of all of that stuff that can distract us from what we're really here to do, which is look at the core mining performance of this Avalon Nano 3S. And so there's actually three modes that it can run on. And when machines can run on three modes, ultimately it's just different frequencies that the ASIC chip inside can run on. High mode is gonna be the most performance that you're gonna get out of the machine. And I've measured this, you can see it right here. I've measured this, it's doing 6.38 terahash per second, and it's pulling 143 watts at the wall. I actually noticed that the display, the reading within the machine itself is about 10 watts off when running in high mode. The next mode you have is medium mode. Here you're gonna reduce the power quite a bit. Because of that, you're also gonna reduce the frequency that the chip inside is running at. Thus it's gonna give you 4.93 
terahash and 101 watts. And again, the software reading is about eight watts off. This is a great way to save some power, save some heat being produced, and still get a good amount of hashing power out of the Nano 3S. Now, the last mode is low. So I've tested low, and low is gonna do 3.4 terahash per second, so we're almost halved the original performance, but because we're pulling it that much lower, it's gonna have so much less power, it's only gonna do 67 watts, which is about five watts off from what the software is reporting here. So why would you use different modes and which one should you use? If you just want the most Bitcoin generated from this machine, you should use high mode. If the heat it's producing doesn't impact you, if the power it's putting on your electric bill doesn't impact you, I mean, we're only talking like 140 watts, it's really not a lot at all, then you should just go on high mode. Low mode would probably be the other extreme. If you want to keep this thing really not producing any very little to any heat at all, and you're okay missing out on some of the Bitcoin it could generate, low is probably the best place for you to be. Now, medium is the in-between. That's just gonna be a balance of you figuring out how you want to run this. You can even go on websites like What to Mine where you can calculate with your electric rate what mode is best for you to run at, what is gonna come out making more Bitcoin and using less power based on your electric rate. Now, before we get into what this actually makes in Bitcoin, we gotta give a thank you over to ASIC Arc who sent this machine over to me to make this video. And why I decided to work with them is because of one reason, they have US stock of this machine and many others in a time here in the US where it's very difficult to get machines in without paying excess customs or tariffs. I was really excited to see that they have local inventory available so you don't gotta pay all that to get this shipped right to your door. So check them out further if you're looking to get this or anything else that's been great so far. Link is down in the video description below. But from there, let's check out how much this thing makes in Bitcoin per day. Now, hold on to your pants because it's not a lot. We're gonna go over to miningnow.com, checking out the Canaan Avalon Nano 3S. Six terahash though. As you saw, it does more. It's doing 6.36 terahash right now which with a 10 cent electric rate in profit per day is getting you like three cents in profit in USD in Bitcoin. But if you go over to monthly, then you're at like 75 cents. So it's not a lot. I get it. This is definitely not a lot. But when a machine is pulling so little wattage like this one is, I really, in my case, you might be different. I decided to just look at revenue instead. So with this, revenue-wise, is $0.35 cents in Bitcoin per day. Monthly revenue, you're looking at about $11. And then in a year, you're looking at about $130 in Bitcoin in a year. And, and that can definitely change as the price of Bitcoin goes up or down and more machines come online. But um, for the price of this thing and for what it makes and all the cool feature sets, I actually think it is a great value. You just have to think a little bit outside of profit, 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 profit which is sometimes where we can get stuck. But again, for that person that I would recommend this to who just wants to get involved and have a machine that is kind of cool, like th this is still the one. Now, one of the things you have to decide upon is what you want to do. Do you want to just pool mine, mine with everybody else? You can get that consistent Bitcoin every day, every month, every year. Or, which is, by the way, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that, this is gonna run off my solar system, so I'm not paying anything electric uh, for running this machine. Or you can go solar mining with it instead, where you're gonna give yourself a lottery ticket to see if you could hit a Bitcoin block, and that's gonna be extremely difficult, but it could be a big payday. And, and actually, on the screen right here, I'm going to leave a video that I put a lot of work into calculating the odds of actually hitting a Bitcoin block. So check that one out. And then I also mentioned earlier that crazy baseboard heater that this company makes. If you want to see that in action, I'll leave that video linked on the screen here as well. But otherwise, hope you enjoyed this video. Please take care of yourself and each other, and I'll see you in the next one.